Okay, guys. Uh, so, a little bit of work to do today. Uh, not too much. I'm just waiting on a couple of pieces from Amazon. Uh, basically, stuff to ground the uh, the batteries. So I have a, a ground block, um, a couple of small kind of lugs. Uh, so I'm going to ground the system. Uh, put the block up somewhere here as i say and uh, ground them all so the functional setup of the system was completed yesterday what are we like day five six i don't really know now um anyway i think i think we're on day five so a good few hours have gone into this uh, mainly because i was a little bit ad hoc with everything it wasn't uh, you know planned to a t um I ran into a couple of issues, had to redo a lot of stuff. So uh, yeah, a lot more hours than I would have liked to have gone into this, so it's taken a lot longer. The results, I'll show you now. So here is the inverter. And as you can see here, we're the 4th of November, 2024. It's two o'clock. There's a little bit of solar being generated, but I've turned the kettle on, so we're drawing um, three kilowatts there. We're at, we're at 88%. All right, so the batteries are being worked. Moving on to battery one, you can see here, just block that up. Um, we're drawing um, 29 amps there and we're at 89%. Battery number two, 29.8 amps, so less than an amp in the difference there. And we're at 88.5, so 88.5% and 88.9%. That is a much better result than what we had last time. Um, if you have, if you've looked at the previous videos, you might remember that there was, I was drawing like four and a half amps from here and there was nothing being drawn from battery two at all. And the percentages, there was probably about a 10% difference in the percentages uh, coming from the, the batteries. So this is a lot better. As I say, it's all set up. Uh, I'll show you um, everything underneath here and you know, the cables when it's a little bit tidier, but functionally it's set up what i'm going to do now is get a little bit of uh, insulation uh, up on the top here and in the back section this is what i'm using so i'll pop that up there i have to cut out a couple of pieces for the back tidy up this little bit of a mess it's a lot tidier in here now um only very partially thanks to myself very much thank you to my lovely wife who gave this uh, a good sweep out last night, so it's a lot nicer to work in. Right, anyway, so I'm gonna get onto this, tidy this up a little bit. Uh, once my equipment arrives tomorrow, I'll be able to completely finish everything off. And who knows, I might even get a little bit of painting done here as well, just to tidy it up. Now, before I go, uh, I did mention that I'd be keeping an eye on the temperature uh, in this uh, side passage. So I picked myself up one of these uh, Govies, uh, not sponsored, I don't have any video sponsors or anything like that. Um, so this is a hygrometer or hygrometer or whatever the hell. Um, yeah, it measures the humidity, which I don't really give a damn about, but it also measures the temperature. Uh, this is a Bluetooth device, so I can kind of stand on the other side of the wall and you know download whatever data is stored in it. So the other night, uh, we were definitely well below uh, 10 degrees Celsius and I, I, I downloaded the information from this and the lowest temperature it got to, um, it was higher than 17 degrees Celsius anyway. I also noticed that between 2 and 6 a.m., which is when the inverter here behind me is at full tilt, uh, charging the batteries, it's running at just over 5 kilowatts. Um, it actually went up to above 20 degrees. I believe it was 20.7 degrees uh, Celsius. So it was nice and toasty in here overall, uh, certainly comfortable. Yes, I'm wearing a jacket, but you know, the door is also open and um, I'm known to wear uh, my coat in the house. Anyway, very, very autistic of me, um, but that's how I roll. Right, so I'm gonna get a little bit of work done here. Uh, put this insulation in place. It's got nothing to do with the buzz bars, so I'm not gonna video that going on. Um, it does have a um, little bit to do with the cabinet, but I don't think I'll add that to a cabinet video. I'll just leave it as is. <laughs> Cut a bit of insulation, you know, put it in the back, put it in the top. There is nothing to it. If you can't do that, um, I wouldn't trust you with a spoon. So we'll leave it at that. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, so time to 
bring battery three out. I need to get it from my living room into the family room here. Then I need to bring it all the way down here. Down these steps, which is the hardest part of the move. And then I'll be able to wheel it down through the uh, side passage there and um, use the hoist. So how do I get it down the steps with just me? I'm going to take a, uh, take this cabinet apart or shelving apart. Uh, it was in the side passage there. So I'm going to take the two long pieces, um, strap them together and use them as a lever to um, safely bring it down the steps. So I'm going to time lapse all of this so it doesn't really interfere with the um, buzz bar video. Okay, so I've decided uh, I can tidy up the cables uh, afterwards. I have enough uh, space to kind of move the battery back and forth to be able to get in and tidy up the cables afterwards. The main task is going to be to get battery three up into cabinet three. Uh, now, why am I even showing you this? This is a bus bar video. Well, the reason why you're gonna be putting bus bars in place is because you have two or more batteries. And this is part of the painful process of getting your batteries in place. A lot of people will just have them on the ground, easy installation. Um, but because this buzz bar system is specific to my situation, I'm going to show you the hassle that I've had to go through to get everything the way that I want it to be. Uh, now, I'm not going to waste a lot of time this being a buzz bar video uh, showing you me uh, hauling this up into um, cabinet three. So I'm gonna time lapse this just so you see um, some of the process. So just real quick here, um, what I've done is I've, I've set my anchor points um, just to the back of the battery. The uh, reason why I've done that is I want the battery to tilt, so I want the end of it to tilt toward the uh, cabinet. By doing that, it'll raise it up just a little bit higher uh, because it's quite tight here. It'll raise it up just high enough that I should be able to swing the bottom of it into place and then push the um, push the battery in. Now what I need to watch out for is I need to just lift it slowly to make sure that everything is secure. So I'll lift it maybe a couple of centimeters above the ground, make sure that everything is secure, and then I'll proceed to lift from there. Okay, so the battery is up. Um, don't try this at home on your own. 
uh, yeah, look, it's uh, it's not an easy job to get it up there. Um, probably looked a lot more dangerous um, than it was. So essentially what I did was very slowly lifted it up as high as I possibly could, uh, tilted the back ends um, of the, the lower back ends toward the cabinet. So once I had one corner in, I was able to rest the other corner, let the uh, hoist down uh, just a fraction so it was balanced and secure. Then I could get in behind it and as I gave it a little bit more slack, I was able to essentially just push it into place. Um, so that's it, it's in place. I'm going to remove the uh, straps and the protection and then I'm gonna hook her up, okay? Okay, so it's um, pretty dark outside now. Um, it's 25 past five or uh, 21 past five. I'm hungry, haven't eaten anything since breakfast, so I'm gonna finish up now. Um, just do a quick tidy up beforehand. So battery three is in place in cabinet three. I have the positive and negative connected and I have the uh, comms cable, so the CAT6 uh, connected into battery two. Right, so let's see what we have now. So battery three, I have 47.5 state of charge. Battery two is 84%. Battery one is 84.3. And you can see there between battery one and two, so I mean, we've basically 7.7 .7 amps and 7.3 amps. So they're pretty close together now. I think it's time to turn on or activate the battery. Let's see what happens here. So we're showing zero amps, zero current. Flick that up. Okay, we have lights and we have positive 10 amps. So it's taking charge from here and from here. All right, so everything is functioning now as it should. I'll do the cable tidy tomorrow um, on top and bottom, and then I'll go through a final view of everything when it's complete. <laughs>